Hello TypeScript fans! Today we will see a very cool use case for const assertions and we will see how we can use const assertions as type parameters. So to say like const type parameters in action. And let me quickly remind you of what const assertions are. I already made a video in the past, but just as a quick refresher, let's say you have uh, a constant here in array, then due to the nature of it being uh, called by reference here, it is possible to push and modify the values within the array because only the reference here is locked but not the contents inside of this array reference. So we can modify it, but we can prevent it by using the as const uh, construct, this one here. So now the array will become read only and thus we can not push any other values than the ones that were initially defined. So this won't be allowed when my array is read only. And this is what we can provoke using the as const declaration here. So this is the const assertion. Now let's check how this looks in a real world use case. In a real world use case, I, uh, I'm having this uh, selection function here and it returns me an answer um, regarding uh, the choices that can be made. So here's a question like, uh, are you using code? Uh, uh, are you using a code bundler when compiling code? Um, yes or no. And uh, this, by the way, comes from the very nice um, package here in, in Cryo, which I can highly recommend when building CLI tools. But back to the code. So here is uh, my selection and I can uh, give it uh, two values, yes or no. And depending on uh, the selection, the answer here will be set. And the answer is of type string because uh, here's a string and there's a string. And if we look inside of the uh, select definition, then we see already that that thing is generic. And here are the choices and the choices can have values that are also here generic. Yeah, we have here the, the type argument. So how will this now behave? Well, the code here says it can be yes or no and um, the um, type that is then being inferred is of type string. But actually, it's not any string, it's actually uh, really just a string yes or no. So it would be better to have it typed like this. And we can get there by using const assertions. So I can uh, write behind my yes as const, and I can do the same for no. And then we will get to see that the answer now is only yes or no which is quite cool because um, imagine we would have an if condition here. If answer equals yes, then we can do things, yeah? But um, let's say we change now from yes to yes, yeah? Then we get now informed that this case can never happen, yeah, because there is no overlap between uh, yes and, uh, and yes. And uh, this information we only get because TypeScript knows here that answers can only uh, that answer can only be this or or no, yeah, and that can't be just a simple simple yes anymore. Yeah, and this is what we achieve by using const assertions. Yeah, if we wouldn't have had this, for example, if we, if I remove it now, then answer can only be yes. Yeah, it can never be just a simple yes. So that case here would get lost and. Uh, would become problematic, yeah, if I refactor my code, yeah, if I say, for example, here, let's uh, use okay, yeah, if I say okay, and I forget to also modify this here to be okay, which can happen in, in a real world use case, yeah, then, then you're screwed, yeah, and then your if condition uh, doesn't trigger anymore, and that can become problematic. But all of this can't happen if you use const assertions, yeah, with s const. Um, we are protected against this because then we will be informed that we also need to refactor here the if condition. So much about the const assertions, but now comes something that I want to show you because const assertions are quite an old thing. They exist since uh, TypeScript 3.4, but uh, as of TypeScript 5, 
they can also be used in, in parameters. And this is what I want to show you now, because I want to put this um, questionnaire here in its own function. So let me write a new function, function get answer. And now I want to um, have the yes value as a parameter and I want to have the no value also as a parameter. And if I set it up like this, then I can uh, put my uh, select in here and I will return the value of it. And then I will make my answer use this um, get answer function. And I will put in as a yes value, let's say, um, let's uh, stay with the example from the beginning, yes. And the no value will become no. And then I want to use these parameters here as values. So this is actually the no value. yeah. <laughs> and uh, this one here is actually the yes value. See, there came already the confusion. But uh, now it works, yeah, like, so I have my no value here and I have my yes value here. Great. Um, now I'm inputting yes and no, so my answer should be yes or no. But if I look here, then I will see that I need to put in a wait. And if I look again, I will see that answer is still being resolved uh, or inferred to string. Hmm. That's not what we want, right? We want that it also be inferred to be of type yes or no, like the literal type. Um, we can now think, okay, then let's uh, go back here and let's do what we did in the beginning as const. And let's also put an as const here. But then we will see another error. Yeah, We will see that a const assertion can only be applied on uh, enum members, strings, numbers, booleans, but not on, on this parameter. Yeah, We have a string here, but it uh, came in as a parameter and here it doesn't work. Hmm, not so good, right? So let's um, remove it. Maybe, maybe it works if we use it here as const and then we use an as uh, uh, const also for the no. Um, let's see what our answer is. Our answer is still being inferred to type string. And that's something we would like to avoid, right? We have now yes as const and we have a const assertion also for no. So I would like to have answer also being inferred to the string literal yes and the string literal no, but it isn't. <laughs> so that's where um, const type parameters come in. Yeah, we can go to our get answers function and we can say, okay, let's use um, a generic type here, generic type t, and we can put a const in front of it. And then we can reuse t here for the yes value and for the no value. And now we will see that uh, it returns then like also a promise with type t. And if we look now here in our answer, we'll see that it is being inferred to the yes or the no. We can also remove now the s const from here. We don't need it because uh, we have the const here at the, at the type. And this will then be it. <laughs> yeah, This is how you can like now use const assertions in your functions and um, apply it to parameters. We can also make it a bit stricter because uh, we want to have strings, but uh, like specific strings, but we don't want to have numbers. Yeah, like uh, if I put, for example, one or two, it will be inferred to one or two. And uh, if we want to avoid it, we can also set limitations. So we can say that this um, const uh, type parameter extends a string, whoops, string so now I need to give it strings Yeah, now I can say like for example ABC or XYZ yeah this will make it a string and then I still get this nicely inferred type so I can't do this anymore yeah I bind it now to a string but at least to a very specific one.